so please um, first uh, present yourself, where you are now, who you are, um, maybe also how old are you, how old you okay. are. Okay, um, well, I'm Peter Philipson. Um, I'm now in my office uh, in Manchester. Um, uh, with beautiful big old trees outside. Um, so it's a place I like sitting. It's my 68th birthday today. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I had a lazy start and uh, presents and uh, time with my wife uh, this morning. So uh, uh, I'm in a sort of happy mood. And we they celebrated with our neighbours um, in our garden yesterday, um, which was lovely. I, I live in a lovely neighbourhood where uh, the neighbours are very uh, friendly and supportive with each other. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so maybe if this is uh, your, your birthday, um, yeah, I, I sort of feel honoured that you watched this interview, uh, uh, humans interview to, today, mm -hmm. your birthday. Uh, um, maybe you have some kind of um, <laughs> uh, Kind of reflections uh, because of this day because uh, I don't know I myself when I, uh, it is my birth then they I then I have lots of thinking sometimes and feelings mm -hmm. and the question is about about you as a human being and your qualities mm -hmm. and your values mm -hmm. um, so if you could say something about that yes about that. okay. Um... Well, I'm aware that I'm moving closer to 70, mm -hmm. um, which to me doesn't really make much sense. Um, but uh, I'm aware of it, mm -hmm. and especially um, in terms of uh, the virus and the, the risks for older people. Um, you know, so it's something. I'm aware of, um, but it, it's just a very different birthday this year because mm -hmm. you know we've been locked down for months, and uh, uh, I've been doing a lot of traveling, and now I'm spending large amounts of time, you know, on <laughs> screens like this, um, and finding out what I can do and what I can't do. Uh, it, in this format, um, and uh, also finding a way of celebrating my birthday in this uh, format. Um, uh, I'm going to be speaking to my son this evening. Uh, so, uh, mm -hmm. uh, most of it is at a distance apart from our immediate neighbour group. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and if if you were maybe uh, uh, yeah uh, elaborate on uh, on your yeah qualities not as a therapist but qualities as a as a person. Uh, okay. Oh. Well, there's sometimes debate about whether these are all qualities. Um, I, I try and be very honest. Um, I don't uh, hold back um, when I think that people might not like what I do or say. Um, uh, and there's all sorts of background and history about that. Um, my, my family were uh, refugees on both sides. And uh, there was a lot of pressure to conform mm -hmm. uh, and, and to fit in. And there were repercussions in childhood for uh, not fitting in. Um, but uh, 
my family were very supportive in that way. Um, they had an absolute contempt for racists, having, you know, been uh, living under the Nazis. Mm. And they taught me to respond with contempt rather than um, with uh, fear. Mm -hmm. Although I was afraid as well. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, it, it was a kind of self-survival thing uh, that uh, it wouldn't have felt like survival if I had just become an image of what I was expected to be. Uh, and I know my brother took a different path with that. Um, and, you know, it, it, it makes it quite difficult for the two of us to have a meaningful talk with each other. Mm. So, you know, I bowled for that side of uh, um, staying with who I was. And it, it feels lovely for me, although there are some people who really don't get on with what I'm saying, then they keep a distance. And the people who uh, come closer are, are people who uh, are similar, so we can really see each other. Mm -hmm. And I like that. Mm -hmm. so that's a value. Mm -hmm. uh, justice is a value. I've mm -hmm. uh, been involved in uh, various socialist campaigns for uh, forever. Um, it used to be uh, sort of uh, involved in direct action and all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm very aware of what's going on now. And I remember times of uh, being in a protest and police horses riding into the process and things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. um, and all the both excitement and anxiety and sense of camaraderie in, in that. Mm -hmm. mm. So uh, um, that's there. Um, um, so generosity, I think, is another one. The, I, I've found I'm much happier and the people around me are much happier if I live generously. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, sometimes a bit of a um, stretch of being financially generous mm -hmm. uh, because you know when when I was growing up, my family didn't have much money, and uh, um, also there was a kind of value of um, you need to have something to buffer you in case things go wrong. And, you know, my parents knew what things going wrong could mean. Mm -hmm. So uh, there, there again is a kind of tinge of survival to that, which I have to counter to get back to the generosity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I love meeting people and traveling and meeting people from different cultures. Mm -hmm. um, and again, um, I was not brought up in the culture or even in the language of the society around me in Britain. Mm -hmm. So when I was in the home as a young child, we were in sort of Central European um, uh, culture and speaking German. Mm -hmm. And then I went out of the house and went to school or went to my friends. And it was a different culture. It was an English culture. It was, uh, or an Irish culture. We lived in Northern Ireland for mm -hmm. a time. Um, and uh, speaking English. So, uh, it, um, I was never an insider purely in one culture, so um, I, I find it very easy and interesting to move between cultures. Mm -hmm. um, and when I teach in different places, um, 
or socialize in different places, I know I have to do it slightly differently in lots of different cultures. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, well, you partly uh, answered the, 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 the next question I intended to ask you mm -hmm. about. Uh, who and what uh, had uh, the greatest impact on, 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 on you as a human being. So this is what I'm now uh, uh, yeah, getting from, from you about your family and about their uh, history and about their stories. Uh, yeah. mm, but uh, would you name uh, anyone else outside it, or maybe you would like to, uh, yeah, uh, say it again and elaborate. I don't right. know. Well, I've said about my family, uh -huh. um, but uh, there there were a number of other people who uh, have been very. Um, important for me um, in my life. Um, the, um, um, the people, uh, I, when was it? it was 50 years ago now, I, I was a singer. Yeah. And um, in a big choir. Okay. Um, and the, the people, who, the person who accepted me into the choir and the people who uh, sang with me in the choir uh, and the people I sang uh, being conducted by um, were uh, very important for me. People like, like Leonard Bernstein, uh, you know, and, and uh, 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 Leopold Sikowski and you oh, know okay. it, it was an amazing time. Wow, Benjamin Britten, uh -huh. um, and so that uh, the people who accepted me uh, uh, into university studying mathematics and philosophy. Mm -hmm. So that, that was another big mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. I feel like I've lived a number of different lives. Uh -huh. Um, the political people I came across, um, um, amazing guy, you know, a uh, Brazilian guy called Paulo Freire, mm -hmm. uh, an educationalist, um, uh, and uh, my wife and me uh, went to uh, a series of seminars he gave in Britain in the 1970s, mm -hmm. uh, and he was a both with what he wrote and how he was personally, were a uh, huge influence on me. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, Gestalt therapy, um, the first Gestalt group I, um, I attended in 1979, mm -hmm. um, a, a man called Beverly McGavin Edwards, mm -hmm. um, who, um, I came back from the group and said to Mary, um, that's who I want to be when I grow up. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and then Bud Feeder and Ruth Renal, um, mm -hmm. because um, I, I was involved in group work um, and I was involved in Gestalt therapy. Uh, by this time I was a youth and community worker. Mm -hmm. Um, and um, I've been doing group work and attending group work events. Mm -hmm. uh, but I kept Gestalt therapy and the group work separately. Mm -hmm. And then I read Beyond the Hot Seat, and mm -hmm. so did John Harris, who I was working with. And we absolutely loved it and were so excited. Um, and that Bud later became a, a long term friend of mine who I stayed with a number of times that he stayed with me and mm -hmm. taught my kids Indian leg wrestling and things. Um, it, it's uh, quite magical for me. Mm -hmm. uh, so then, and my uh, Aikido teachers, uh -huh. um, 
particularly my original sensei, uh, Luca Sensei, mm -hmm. um, was um, a, a very big inspiration for me. And in some ways became a kind of father figure as well, because my father died when I was young. Uh -huh. And he, uh, he, I think I kind of adopted him as a father figure. Mm -hmm. so, um, and in a way, the, the most, uh, Mary, uh, my wife, we've been together since 1976 now, mm -hmm. which is a, a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, we're still very much in love. And, uh, and uh, that's, in, in the immediate term, very, the, the, the most important influence on my life and my kids, you know, mm -hmm. and son and daughter. Mm -hmm. both much bigger than me and yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, mm. and again you partially started to uh, <laughs> to somehow approach the address the, the, the next sorry <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's okay. So, uh, so your uh, beginnings with uh, with Gestalt therapy. Uh, how did you come to Gestalt world? Well, I went to a group work conference uh, mm -hmm. in, in 1979, as I said, um, and one of the groups was a, a Gestalt group, mm -hmm. um, and and I loved it. And I started getting Gestalt experiences where, wherever I could, mm -hmm. um, um, as a uh, as a client, um, and also you know, building up some Gestalt knowledge for for the work I was doing, which was at the time with homeless young people. Mm -hmm. I was a street worker, mm -hmm. um, and uh, how to adapt uh, the, the Gestalt way of working uh, to uh, uh, working with somebody in a heavy metal disco and uh, you know <laughs> uh, or, or in a park or the all night cafe yeah. uh, so, <laughs> and then I started training in 83 uh-huh okay mm -hmm. hmm. so if uh, so through those years, like uh, starting from yeah, beginning of the 80s uh, up till 30, 83, you were a, you were a street worker and and uh, and trying to apply uh, your start. Yes. Yeah, and uh, values. Yeah. I don't know. Ah. Uh, yeah. hmm. And and then did you continue with that or you withdraw from this? Uh, you know, work in, in, in streets? Uh, um, I, I, I did that for four years, and okay. then I was uh, a community worker for a time. Um, but um, it, I wasn't happy with my community work job. Uh -huh. um, uh, the, the street work uh, was so intensive, mm -hmm. uh, I couldn't do it for very long. In fact, uh, the other thing that happened was I became very ill uh -huh. um, um, in 1981. I got cancer okay. and had to stop working for a time mm -hmm. uh, and was under intensive treatment. Mm -hmm. So, uh, mm -hmm. which was also a, a learning period for me, but huh? uh, yeah, not not a way I would have liked to have learned. But I certainly learned some things. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, I imagine. Uh, yeah, that's why I somehow re re uh, turned to this uh, uh, area. Uh, you know, working in the in the streets. Uh, I imagine this was really heavy and intense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it gave, also gave me uh, a lot. Uh, it's what was when I started Aikido. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, because I felt the need for yeah. self-protection. Yeah. Uh, uh, so it gave me that. Uh, and connection with very different people, a whole different culture. Yeah. Um, 
in the uh, science fiction books of Samuel Delaney, uh, he writes about cities in the future having an unlicensed sector where the law doesn't apply. Um, and uh, um, that develops a whole different character. Um, and, and the powerful people are very different in the way people engage. And there's a lot of creativity, mm -hmm. uh, not even necessarily more violence than anywhere else, but yeah. everything's different. And I was basically working in the city centre in Manchester at night, which was like the unlicensed sector. Yeah, uh, oh, once, that's not a plan. Yes. At one stage, it was a no-go area for police at night. Mm. Yeah. So uh, mm. but, uh, I discovered that word had gone round that if anything happened to me, there would be some people um, who would have something to say about it. <laughs> interesting to discover that yeah <laughs> mm. um and uh, and your attraction with uh, with gestalt therapy both uh, theory and practice uh, ha has that uh, been changing through all these years i mean for, for, for sure or maybe not for sure maybe uh, you you've been interested in some uh, areas and you developed it i don't know i wonder yeah yes um the, oh yes my gestalt therapy has changed and developed and assimilated other things uh -huh. um for historical reasons i really don't like the idea of ghettos uh -huh. um and uh, um so I've always tried to be open to and interested in lots of different ways of doing things, mm -hmm. uh, both inside and outside Gestalt therapy. Um, and uh, um, I guess my original trainer, uh, Patricia Clarkson, mm -hmm. was mostly on the um, uh, Goulding redecision end between gestalt therapy and transactional analysis um, but there was also a fair amount of banging cushions and, and things which i've used to get people to do a lot um, but um, I, I was always very self-critical of what i was doing and uh, uh, i kind of noticed that I'd never ever seen anybody change doing that sort of work, uh -huh. um, including, you know, with myself. And um, then I, I was lucky enough uh, to be able to um, go to many different teachers um, and discover many different ways of working in adult therapy and also outside uh, because i've never been just um if you like religiously gestalt uh therapy um you know if somebody could convince me that something else saw things more clearly i i would uh, want to move towards that but what i've found is that gestalt therapy is a, a wonderful uh, basis for assimilating lots of things. Mm -hmm. So I studied various kinds of body work um, and um, object relations theory mm -hmm. and Ericksonian hypnosis um, and um, a group work of various kinds mm -hmm. um, and really, you know, tried to incorporate as much as I could from all of those um, uh, into it, into my work uh, mm. in some way. Um, one very particular thing in terms of the uh, hypnotherapy mm -hmm. that I studied, uh, I don't practice hypnosis, but one thing I found incredibly useful um, is that when people are in trance, mm -hmm. their movements are very small. 
and you have to notice very small movements and changes in skin color uh, and, and, uh, and twitches mm -hmm. uh, to get some kind of sense of what's going on. And the ability to do that, um, it, it, I've found so incredibly useful in visual mm -hmm. therapy. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I've, I've just for years kept on changing. But I, I have to say that you know what what I what I'm doing now, based on self theory and the, all the earliest stuff, uh, has worked so well for me and my clients that I would need a real convincing to change again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, getting older and getting more set in my ways, basically because they work for me. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. But I know, I mean, like uh, out of this context, I am uh, aware of your also, I don't know, interest, if this is a good word, in the neuro neuroscience, because you sometimes relate mm -hmm. to that. And mm -hmm. if it is yeah. most recent uh, interest, uh, because, uh, yeah, when you, say, when you speak about what could you convince you, I wonder if neuroscience. Uh, is the one or not? Uh, right. Well, uh, in a way that fits in with my interest in the earliest days of Gestalt therapy, because uh, Fritz Perls was uh, involved in probably the state of the art neuroscience research projects uh, mm -hmm. in his time in, uh, in Frankfurt, in the Goldstein's okay. Institute for Brain mm -hmm. Damaged Soldiers. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it's the, the not to separate the psychological and the physical mm -hmm. uh, is very important for me mm -hmm. and uh, to um, um, be able to see what's going on on all those levels and to get them relating to each other mm -hmm. uh, it, is really important for me. And if neuroscience showed that some of the things I'm saying in digital therapy are wrong, I would drop them. And I have done, you know, because I think some of the things uh, that uh, I was taught, uh, uh, neuroscience shows was wrong. Huh. Uh, very specifically, the idea, I cannot know uh, you, mm -hmm. I can only project onto you. Mm -hmm. It is just wrong, you know, all, all that we know. So um, I'm actually feeling very lucky because all I discover about neuroscience really, really strongly supports the way I'm working. Uh -huh. uh, so Louis Cosolino says Gestalt therapy uh, is a uniquely good way of doing this work. Mm. You know, he's a neuroscientist who huh? writes okay. writing about therapy. Mm -hmm. And uh, Alan Shaw writing about uh, mutual regression between therapist and client as a basis for depth psychology. Mm. You know, so the idea that we go to basic physical uh -huh. being together. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and Daniel Stern, of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, I felt very, very supported in what I do by neuroscience and the bits that are not supported, I, I would always question. Uh -huh. uh, you mean like within neuroscience that there are some things that are, that you, you may be critical to towards when it comes to neuroscience, there are some bits that you are critical of or? Well, no, it, it, that, uh, uh, yes, there are some pieces of research that uh, I find mm -hmm. uh, strange, uh, mm -hmm. badly put together. Huh? Okay. Uh, um, uh, 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 yes, but it's more that you know, if a re if reputable neuroscientists, um, uh, I would add uh, Valinda Ramachandran to huh? that list, mm -hmm. um, say that these me uh, mechanisms exist and these mechanisms don't exist, mm -hmm. that would then, uh, I, I think that what I do needs to incorporate that 
knowledge so i'm more critical of psychotherapy okay yeah yeah that's why i mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. uh, yeah I'm, I a, I'm a materialist i'm an atheist and i'm a materialist and but you know the nice thing again is that in the last hundred years matter has become uh, much more uh, amazing and complex mm -hmm. than, than even most religions mm -hmm. you know so it, it it isn't just things it's uh, processes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah uh, i am aware of how much unaware of uh, of it i am i mean like i don't know those names uh, for instance mm -hmm. i know you know like only Galeze, uh, because uh, of some phenomenologists who are yeah. relating to him. Yes. But the, the names you are, in, you know, referring to now or uh, somewhere when you write something, I, I don't know them. So uh, I guess, and mm -hmm. most of the uh, Gestalt therapists don't know. I may, maybe I'm wrong, but so maybe. It, this in some places they're taught as part of it. In some places it's. Okay very separate. Um, I've, I've just been asked to teach about or to lecture about Gestalt therapy and neuroscience at the uh, uh, Ukrainian psychotherapy conference. Oh, great. You know, so uh, ah. uh, it, it, there's, uh, there is a growing and strong interest in, in some areas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm, okay, <laughs> bear, bear that in mind. Uh, mm. uh, um, yeah, this Ukraine Institute is uh, really um, somehow inviting lots of uh, Gestalt therapies from around mm -hmm. the world. Uh, I've heard well, from a number of institutes, uh, many different institutes. Uh, in Ukraine, uh, you mean like, or in, yeah, of course, but uh, yeah, uh -huh. okay. Mm. Uh, and uh, so if you were to say, um, maybe you partly again said that, but um, your contribution, uh, what, yeah, you haven't, uh, I guess, touched that yeah. issue. Uh, what your contribution to Gestalt community would be? I mean, in both in practice, maybe also in theory, and uh, the, 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 the books, the workshops uh, um, you delivered, uh, they are around which themes, what, which topics? Uh, mm -hmm. How would you okay. summarize that? Um, the central thing is going back to the uh, theory of self. Mm -hmm. uh, and I emphasize that um, in an embodied way and involving movement mm -hmm. um, and try as much as possible to get away from talking heads mm -hmm. um, which is sometimes difficult on zoom but uh, mostly manage it mm -hmm. um, uh, other things I've contributed uh, theoretically um, I have um, an understanding of uh, anorexia uh -huh. uh, based on the theory which uh, for the first time I really understand it or have a sense of understanding it in a way that when I communicate it to clients uh, they say yes that's right uh -huh. uh, and I find that so mm -hmm. exciting. Mm -hmm. um, uh, an understanding of shame um, as a retroflection of disgust, um, a group process mm -hmm. um, uh, with this integration with Gestalt therapy. Um, those are the uh, kind of uh, theoretical things. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, what I'm most excited by is that um, there was a time when it seemed like I was writing on my own, but but now I have a real sense of I have my gang, um, people like Gianni Francesetti and Jan Rubel um, and yeah. Dan Bloom, mm -hmm. and uh, we're friends as well as uh, 
uh, colleagues and uh, I remember at the AAGT Taumina conference um, uh, I uh, emailed Mary to, uh, after uh, uh, Gianni had come up behind me and give me a big hug and I said Mary I need you to know I'm in love <laughs> <laughs> Um, so th there are people taking this in different directions and we're in contact with each other. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was, yeah. um, that's exciting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the other contribution is yeah. uh, just... uh, organizational. That's, uh, um, mm -hmm. I was one of the founder members of Manchester Gestalt Centre in 1988 mm -hmm. and um, I, I was one of the people involved in the original discussions in America out mm -hmm. of which AAGT was born and I was president there mm -hmm. uh, on stage um, so um, and I'm involved in a number of other institutes so I have uh, I've done quite a lot of uh, organisational stuff. Uh, I was involved uh, with the UK Council for Psychotherapy, which is the accrediting body for psychotherapists in the UK. And uh, I, I was a delegate in the setting up of that. Mm -hmm. um, so, but now I'm fortunately do very, very little committee work. Um, uh, I was not bad at it, but it, uh, but it wasn't really my major interest. Mm -hmm. But I thought it needed to be done, so I did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and when I am now looking at the um, sub well titles of your uh, web webinars. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, what is your m motivation behind uh, those particular areas? Um, why, um, yeah, uh, there was some uh, um, uh, dream work, no, also? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. sex and relationship, uh, so uh, yes, but also dream work, I remember, and also uh, Chair, chair work uh, in, in mm -hmm. couple. A yeah. relational understanding of chair yeah. work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, it, it, yeah creative, anyways. This is what I wanted Ooh. to say. That sounds. Mm. Mm. Well, uh, I, I, I try and be, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, so there's a kind of central theory, but then there's how does that, having that basis, how does that affect lots of different things mm -hmm. um, so for example two chair work can be seen as uh, a kind of uh, 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 either inner work or as a kind of coaching how to work better with your boss or something like that and I don't use it like that mm -hmm. uh, dream work can be again seen as just a matter of the intrapsychic um, symbols so I'm interested in uh, uh, what does it mean to hold this relational field, relational perspective, mm -hmm. and uh, do dream work. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, I do a lot of dream work. Mm. Uh, it, when I do multi-day workshops on, uh, on, on the second and third or whatever day, we always start with whatever dreams people have uh, brought from the night before mm -hmm. uh, as a continuation of the group process. Mm. Mm, great. Uh, yeah, I've been uh, drawn to dream work after, after a while recently and that's why I'm, mm -hmm. I'm interested. Uh, and uh, your workshop is next week, I guess, which is our uh, they, okay, I mean, uh, there is some uh, celebration in in Poland, and I'm out, so I won't be able. But uh, but there is there, this what will be accessible now on the internet. Uh, uh, you can buy it uh, your webinar if I am not able to attend. The 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 Polish one. 
Uh, no, the DreamWork webinar. The DreamWork, yes, it, it'll be, it'll be uh, video, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Video, mm -hmm. or, or, or all the webinars that I do from Manchester. Yeah, this is, this is um, uh, Not if people speak personally, we pause the video, but uh, my original presentation and the discussion yeah. um, are, the, are videoed and then the video is available. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what I appreciate also is that uh, many of your articles are open, uh, you know, uh, um, yeah, that we may actually um, uh, have an access to it. It is also, uh, mm -hmm. uh, yes. yeah. I, I realized that there was a kind of mismatch that uh, I think I've worked in more than 20 countries now uh -huh. um, with different languages. Mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, uh, yet, I was publishing in English language journals, which were not necessarily uh, available or known. So I decided that I would uh, okay. uh, publish my articles as ebooks uh -huh. on Kindle and Kobo. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, and uh, uh, then people could pick them up uh, very easily and yes. cheaply. Yes. And also a, a group of people agreed to uh, translate them into different languages. So many of them are available in uh, a number of languages. Mm -hmm. um, and if anybody, could I ask it, uh, from this, if anybody else is interested in doing that, uh -huh. uh, if, uh, and uh, with any articles that they're interested in, then, then I would be very happy for that. Yeah, we are now translating this uh, polyphony of self. I mean, there are colleagues mm -hmm. of mine in Poland who are uh, in charge of uh, of the oh, whole right. co mm -hmm. cooperation with uh, yeah. with France, uh, uh, and some of us are translating chapters. Oh, wonder wonderful! Yes, yes. Uh, great. that was an amazing uh, yeah. uh, labor. Uh, lots of different. Voices. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, um, okay, and w what would you say uh, about <laughs> the, 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 the last question, which is about the future of Gestalt therapy in, many, in different aspects, in aspects you may think of what would be, what could be uh, the future? Mm. I think the future will be very different in different places. Uh -huh. um, what I've seen growing is um, uh, interconnection between Gestalt therapists from different countries. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think this virus has really helped that because you know, the webinars I've done have had people from uh, an incredible number of different uh, countries um, who have then, you know, been able to speak with each other and get to know uh, each other. So that's good. But in some situations, there's more uh, institutional support for Gestalt therapy. Um, in some places, it's still very individualized into uh, competing institutes um, who uh, hate each other uh, or compete or at least compete with each other and don't really like people going somewhere else um, and aren't very keen on the students progressing beyond their teachers and challenging their teachers. Mm -hmm. uh, I love the growth of um, things like, like the, the thing in Krakow, uh, uh, graduate groups, mm -hmm. uh, people who have qualified and now form groups which are not part of the training institutes mm -hmm. uh, to attend to their own personal and professional uh, development. Uh, and uh, I think that's so important uh, uh, that you can't do Gestalt therapy as an introject. Mm -hmm. um, so people have to find their own way. Um, and yes, maybe for a time their own way will be less 
effective than their teachers. But uh, then you grow into that. And so long as you stay uh, positively critical, if you know what I mean, of, you know, is, is this working? Does this work for me and for my clients? Uh, if not, what doesn't? Um, then that'll extend. So I think that's important. Um, some places I think adult therapy will disappear um, because especially the places that hold on to it as some kind of quasi uh, religious group uh, with its own Bible. Uh, and of course, we're better than everybody else. Um, and in the back of that, an underlying sense of insecurity. Mm -hmm. uh, well, yeah, if, if we um, talk to other people in other therapies, um, we will show ourselves as very ignorant. Um, and then, you know, when there are systems of regulation mm -hmm. uh, that, that go to the sort of anarchist place of, well, we don't want to be regulated. But, you know, at the same time, you're offering people in a lot of distress uh, a therapy. And I think that you have to be able to show that um, what you're doing is a therapy. Mm -hmm. uh, so I support research. I, I support re relating to other um modalities mm -hmm. uh, and we can hold our heads up you know with the latest research I think mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, I think the institutes that don't do that will turn into small cults mm -hmm. um, and will eventually disappear or become irrelevant mm -hmm. uh, it, it, the, the ones that actually make contact uh, <laughs> will, will, will grow and have been uh, growing in a very nice way in many countries. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> Let's just say one other thing um, to, mm -hmm. that the, in their wisdom or otherwise the, the founders of Gestalt Therapy Mm -hmm. didn't want to set up any central framework mm -hmm. or any central set of understandings or standards. Um, and there isn't anybody who has the overall authority to say this is how, what Gestalt therapy should be. Uh, and so just like psychoanalysis or transactional analysis, the therapies that have been around a long time, there are a number of different schools. Um, and that will continue. Uh, the, at best, there will be interaction and movement between the schools so that we can learn from each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you keep um, yeah, saying, uh, underlying this, there are different schools. Uh, um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and so, uh, well. I think it, it's so important to me because um, with the kind of anti-intellectual thing that, uh, uh, that was around uh, in Esalen and okay. places, okay. Um, mm -hmm. people, the, the trainees didn't get the intellectual teeth okay. to be able to understand that mm -hmm. there are different schools. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've seen written work which lumped together ways of doing gestalt therapy which are incompatible with each other mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know not saying one's right one's wrong but yeah having uh, that the assumptions are incredibly different mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I simply wonder if this is still a, a, a risk uh, the same the very same risk as it was uh, then or maybe there are some other risks uh, uh, like the, the completely opposite ones uh, with much theory and no uh, uh, experience. Yeah. Say. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I, I've, I've seen I've seen that. Um, 
and uh, um, it. I think the most uh, uh, the worst that can be said of that is that uh, it isn't very effective. Mm -hmm. People people aren't usually actively hurt in the same way that people have been hurt in some of the anti-intellectual cults mm -hmm. that have grown around Gestalt therapy. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh -huh. uh, I've, yeah. I've seen, you know, how that can happen with the violence and sexual abuse. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, so, yes, it, it, that certainly is a risk. It's how to hold, you know, both sides of the brain, and you know, and the yeah. uh, the, the intellectual underpinning, and the uh, uh, really the real presence being there mm -hmm. together. Yeah, I, I actually am thinking, and I will ask you. Uh, in, in fact. Uh, yeah, because um, hmm, uh, this tendency to, I mean, I am, I also, I am an advocate of, of, of research uh, and at the same time, some, uh, I remember a text of Thomas Fuchs, uh, one of his recent ones, uh, when he is uh, speaking about um, relationality in psychotherapy or maybe in psychiatry I don't recall myself now the title very well but what I've been observing is that he he's I, I really listened to him to his lectures reading him and but, but but what I was kind of intimidated by was that he was actually um, articulating uh, every step you need to do to make uh, a therapy effective or eff efficient um, because the requirements are that to for the for the scientists for the researchers to uh, to prove to make evidence and i was kind of you know uh, because it was a scientific uh, journal and a scientific article and i was okay but it has a sense of the humanization or i don't know i was yeah. even though i am myself a scientist you know and i was yeah. kind of, okay taken well, that, that is a certain kind of science that there is an objective right thing that uh, the, the therapist is not somebody who is part of what's going on is, um, that, that no, I will, I will, yeah, sorry, I will cut in too, only just by saying, yeah, that Thomas Fuchs, you know, rep represent this kind of field orientation, phenomenological underpinnings. Or, uh, All right, okay. Well, that's why I was, you know, uh, this is something I might be, you know, somehow afraid of just to... Yeah. So uh, I'm I'm getting confused because I haven't read Fuchs. Okay. Um, uh, I, I was going with what you were saying about this. This these are the steps. This is what you must do. Yes, um, and at the same time speaking about um, you know phenomenology and about field. So that was something. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I can't really. Uh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 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 of, on that, uh, I think there are some things that I would do and that I wouldn't do. Mm -hmm. um, well, I know there are some things uh, I would do and some things I would, wouldn't do, but uh, um, uh, there's nothing that covers every case, I don't think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that there. I am a bit wary about what's happening in research in Gestalt therapy. Uh, I've seen some very good uh, ideas and some real uh, initiatives. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen uh, uh, research being treated as a kind of new kind of advertising for Gestalt therapy and doing what the worst of the drug companies do and only publishing positive data uh -huh. um, uh, and hiding the negative data 
nothing that is effective doesn't have potential risks. Mm -hmm. um, and the idea is put forward of a risk-free therapy, and that would only apply if there's a risk-free life. Uh -huh. um, yeah. But um, um, I've seen weird pieces of uh, uh, research which uh, 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 miss out so much. So there was a piece of research um, about um, how people interpret a piece of video which is ambiguous whether you see uh, a, a black person is aggressed on or uh, or aggressing, mm -hmm. um, uh, but uh, the um, there was no analysis of the uh, racial uh, background of the participants in the study. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's as, as if it would be the same across all races. Yeah. You know, it, 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 so uh, uh, I've seen research done in ways which uh, um, will only stand until it's scrutinized by people from outside. Okay, yeah, and yeah. You, 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 are, you are addressing some of my anxieties, yeah, of course. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Can we end up here? Uh, can, I, can I just say one, one yes, other thing, just yes, going back to yes. not being in the ghetto or <laughs> being in a cult? Yes. That for me, research is open to the overturning of what you believe, uh -huh. not to showing people how good it is, mm -hmm. but saying, is this really true? Mm. How do we know it's true? Mm -hmm. How do we see the limit of when it's true mm -hmm. um and unless it's that then it isn't research and as i say it'll it'll fall apart under any scrutiny from outside mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. right. more yeah more air thank you <laughs> yeah yeah somehow okay so thank you very much and um, yeah have a, a, a lovely rest of the, the day uh, thank, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. It was so, all the very best. I've enjoyed this. Thanks, Camilla. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Uh -huh.